One, two, three, boom, it's mind pump time. All right, exciting giveaway today. Not one program, more than one program we're giving away. Actually, we're going to give away the sexy athlete bundle. This includes MAPS aesthetic and MAPS performance. Get it? Aesthetic for sexy, performance for athlete. So here's how you can win the sexy athlete bundle. Here's what you got to do. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. And what I'd like you to comment on in the intro you hear us talking about the benefit of sports and not just fitness and performance, but the other benefits you get from playing team sports or even the benefits you get from good coaches. Leave a comment below talking about that, what you've experienced, why you think team sports are valuable, or maybe if you disagree with us, that's fine too. If it's a good comment, we pick your comment and you subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications, you'll win free access to the Sexy Athlete Bundle. So we have to pick your comment, so make it a great one. One more thing, there's one day left for our huge sale this month. Maps Hit and the No BS Six Pack Formula, both 50% off. That sale will end one day from when we drop this episode. So to sign up, head over to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code July Special with no space for that discount. All right, here comes the show. Did you guys see the response of the intermittent fasting uh, episode that we did already? Oh, yeah. I yeah. knew. I knew, of course. Lots of comments. It's like talking about nutrition is like talking about politics or religion in our space, I swear to yeah, God. Yeah, I, you know, it's. I guess I, I thought because so many times that we've brought intermittent fasting on the show, we've wrote a guide about it, um, I, we've done specific topics. Uh, Andrew brought it up. Well, we should do that. It's been a long time since we talked about it. I did not expect the response mm -hmm. that we got from it. Not like that, at least, but you're right. It's so much like religion, and people get so caught up in it. The, one of the, I, I wanted to comment, though, on some of the comments that we got. We had a handful of comments that were recommending... You know, Walter Longo and um, uh, what's his name? Dr. Fung or whatever. Yeah. And they are trying to say that they would debate us or argue our point about it's a terrible for weight loss. And I want to address this because we're not arguing that the science that supports that it the, that it, it can cause weight loss. Yeah, we're not arguing the physiological. That's right. Like I'm not, I'm not going to have a medical doctor come on here and argue with me about behavioral science. Completely different. Like the mechanisms that make it make you lose weight or lose body fat. That science is proven. I don't. We're none of us are denying that science. It really has everything to do with. Do we think it's a good idea because of what happens behaviorally from it? Correct. And in fact, uh, ask a, an expert on eating disorder. That's right. Or a nutritionist. Yeah, a therapist. Like that's the person that you'd want to talk to because we're not talking about the physiological. Look, here's the deal: keto has physiological potential benefit. Lots of diets have some good physiological benefits potentially. And of course, the medical doctor who wrote books about fasting is going to come yeah. on and try and defend <laughs> fasting. Yeah, that's no, no, no. livelihood. Yeah. Literally, <laughs> literally restricting yourself from food in a way to where you're cutting out meals to lose weight for some people can cause behavioral issues around food or bad food relationships. That's the entire argument. It's not, you know, does fasting have benefit or not potentially on a physiological basis? When people comment like that, and this this is what annoys me about lots of debates that you see online, is people will literally listen to three minutes or a clip You're right. or the, read Just the title. Just read the title. Yeah, that's usually what it is. And there's no, and so they end up arguing the wrong thing completely. Right. That's yeah. not at all what the argument was. Right. Did was. you listen to the episode? Because in the episode, we right. explain all the benefits of it. And right. I mean, we wrote a guide around it. I mean, we're, I think we're, we support intermittent fasting, but there is definitely a, a type of client that I think that it's for, and then a person that it's absolutely not for. And most people that you hear that are that are doing it are doing it because someone said, oh, it helped me lose body fat or it's great for it's weight loss. Get you shredded. And it's now fallen into that category. And that is what I think all of us agree is one of the worst strategies. To you use know what's funny? Yeah. If we, okay, if we, fasting became a buzzword in, uh, in health and fitness now, for, uh, probably over the last... 10 year, maybe seven to 10 years, right? Go before that. If somebody, let's go 20 years. If somebody went up to someone else and said, hey, um, I'm going to start losing, I want to lose weight. So what I'm going to start doing is I'm just not going to eat uh, for most of the day. Yeah. It, it, most people would have been like, oh, that's not a good idea. Like, what are you doing? You're, mm -hmm. you're just not going to eat? Like, yeah. that's not necessary. But because it's been labeled fasting and because the physiological benefits have been sold so hard, yeah, yeah. 
now people uh, completely forget that just not eating for a lot of people is not the right approach from a mental psychological standpoint. Right. That's that's the big issue that right, we need right. to focus on. And that's why. And, and the, here's the thing: why having someone like that on the show is just. At the end of the day, because and I don't know Doctor Fung personally, um, but a lot of the, the stuff I know Walter Longo, we've uh, we've touted his information for a long time. Yeah. A lot of his content is phenomenal. Right. So, and we get behind you know ninety percent plus of what he has to say. But uh, having him and what would end up happening, you get somebody on the show like that when they hear where we're coming from, most of them won't argue it. It won't yeah. be a debate. They won't go. They'll agree. Yeah, they'll agree well, with especially that. Especially applying it from a medical perspective. Of I'm trying to like utilize this method with uh, some kind of a treatment that's going in towards like you know like chemo, ke chemo or something like that. Like, there's no denying that's a great strategy. And you know that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about people who are just in it for like the weight loss. Yeah. Okay. So here's the deal. Okay. Uh, people need to understand this. Watching or listening right now, we trained everyday people for decades. Okay. In the beginning, when we were all trainers, here's what we thought was the solution. The mechanisms. Here's the steps. This is all we got to do is teach people the steps. Eat in a calorie deficit. Here's your meals. Exercise this much. All people got to do is follow this. And they'll totally accomplish all of their dreams and goals and I'll solve everybody's health and fitness problems. Right. Here's what you learn. It's not about the steps. It's not about the mechanisms. It's the psychology and the behaviors. Yep. Eventually, you figure that out as a trainer. And then what makes you a good trainer is knowing how to work that. The steps are actually 5% of the problem. And I mean, look, we're, we live in the, day, the, the age of information. I, I mean, I'm old enough to remember when in order for me to figure out calories and macros, I had to have a book and I had to go and refer to that book. Now it's so easy. We have abs. Yet we're still more obese. Yet there's still a problem with health. It's not that. It's not the step. There's been studies where there have been laws passed in cities where – Restaurants have to post the calories and the grams of fat or the grams of sugar. And guess what happens? Nothing. It doesn't help anybody. Nobody gets any 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 healthier because it's not that. It's the the most important aspect of health and fitness has to do with up here, not with what you're doing in terms of your workouts and your diet and all that stuff. That's important, but it's not nearly as important as the mental piece. So totally not fitness related. Um, I was curious though, if you guys have seen this personally in, in maybe family or friends or read this, do you know what's going on right now with like used vehicles and stuff? Aren't they more expensive? Oh, I've, I heard that. Yeah, that got shot up. There is a 45% increase in wow. price over the last over the last two years. But inflation's not happening, Adam. No, well, it's, <laughs> it's less to do with that. What it's actually more related to is semiconductors. So when the, when the pandemic came, they anticipated this huge decline in sales, which everybody saw that initially the first 30, 60 days. And so they cut back on all that. What did that end up translating into was like 6.2 million less vehicles produced over the course of the next year, mm. just like the housing issue right That's now. That's a shortage. Yeah. Low that, supply. Yes. low su So they can't keep up with the demand. So now there's this huge surge in used vehicles. And it's not just like cars. I mean, cars is the main thing with the semiconductors. But my so like my best friend, we uh, the ski sanger that was a boat that uh, I I grew up learning how to ride. When I talk about wakeboarding and stuff mm -hmm. like that, this boat is a 1978 model, 78 or 82, somewhere in that range. My best friend's dad had this. They've had this boat forever. So back in 19, he tried to sell it four years ago, and he was asking six grand for it, and no one would give it for him. And he's kept it pristine and just you know mm -hmm. boat value goes down like crazy. He just sold it this year. How much? Take a guess. So four years, so, it was so almost six, four years ago. Six grand for Couldn't get six grand for it. Couldn't get six grand. Yeah. Uh, 10 grand. 15K. Wow. Uh, he bought it in the 80s or 70s or 80s. <laughs> he bought it in 80 something. He bought it for freaking 10K. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Is, are the, is the price of new cars also going up? No. So right now, a one-year-old used car is almost as valuable or as valuable as a brand new car. You're getting me excited right now because this is a good opportunity then to sell my car. Of course. And then buy a new one. Yes. Right? Because the, exactly. the value went up of the used. Yeah. Oh, That's my weird. goodness. Isn't that interesting? You just yeah. got me excited, dude. I know. I thought that was... But I've seen cases like my buddies, my buddies, but I had somebody else did the same thing. I was just talking... We were talking off air about this stuff. 
and a guy had bought this uh air this is a brand new boat like an aeronautique for like 90 grand he bought it like three four years ago and he just sold it for like 120 this last year wow yeah that's now, crazy okay please dispel this for me or i i don't know i always hear like like whims of conspiracy things around like what's been instituted for carbon emissions and whatnot like is there some kind of governing that biden's enacting with like new vehicles oh i don't know that's a good that's a, that's a you good heard question. that yeah i heard that from somebody and i was like oh Oh no! Yeah. Oh, wow. Interesting. That's a good. I have no idea. Yeah. If, if, what they're doing there. Okay. So I didn't know if you guys had heard that. Yeah. We'll see. By the way, <laughs> I just noticed your shirt. <laughs> I'm coming out, you guys. Hey, I thought <laughs> it said openly gay. No. Like, like, coming out party. <laughs> openly gray. I like that because what does it gray. mean? It's it's just uh, you know it is what, whatever you want it to mean. Yeah. I mean I got gray hair. I'm not dying it. I'm here. Yeah. yeah. People. Just in the gray. <laughs> yeah. Also, you're not black or white. You're somewhere in the middle. I'm, there, I'm right? right there yeah. in the in the in the middle. You know, it's sort of like you know I'm not. On the I spectrum. don't know who's I like more. I don't know if I like the openly gay shirt over here or the less yeah. hand gray. more hand okay, jobs. Oh come on, dude. <laughs> yeah. This is great. <laughs> you know you know what's funny. The timing but, of that yeah. would have been better right when we had the the money printing. You're like, By right, the way, yeah. this is now a so this this shirt right here. Is can, now, you, can you wear that when we, we talk to the Marxist guy? Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So this shirt right here is now available, by the way, at the Mind Pump <laughs> store. So I actually talked to, to Chokey and I said, let's sell these shirts. This Here's why. Because we're, we keep, we're giving people free stuff. We're promising free stuff all the time. I'm like, look, you really want to make people happy? <laughs> Yeah. Nothing, nothing yeah. makes people more happy than that. Free hand jobs. Can you imagine yeah. that? <laughs> Although I gotta, you gotta imagine. Imagine if it was a government worker giving away the free hand jobs. I don't yeah. know if I want that. Oh, Just God. begrudgingly. Oh, yeah. 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 Calloused hands. Nobody yeah. wants to begrudgingly. Hand yeah. Job. yeah. I don't want to begrudge. In <laughs> Everybody's job. had one of those, right? Yeah. A lazy, yeah. lazy what hand are job. You talking about? Come on. Yeah. Come on. I would have just done it myself yeah, if that was going to be the case. I'll just finish it. Come on. I'll That's the last. Hey, who's, who, yeah, are you, either yeah. one of you, are either one of you watching the Olympics right now? Yeah. I'm watching the clips. I, I, watched, like, I watched a lot of the judo uh, highlights. So there's some Japanese uh, fighters. That, God, there was one guy that's doing this variation of uh, Osoto Gari. You guys don't know what that throw is, but it is, uh, it, I mean, he is tossing people with this. Japan's always got good judoka. So anyway. do, you, do you like uh, uh, record it ahead of time or you actually watch it live? No, so I, I follow all these pages on Instagram and then I'll just see the clips, but uh, I haven't been watching. Have you? Yeah, yeah, a little bit, a little bit here and there. I mean, I saw the girls' soccer team lost. I and then I also that. saw the men's basketball team. Dude, lost. what is going on? Too. Those are things we dominate. Women's soccer dominate, yeah. and men's basketball. Yeah. They, who did they lose against? France. Mm. Some, I saw someone commented it's on a it. A little embarrassing. Yeah, less activism, more practice. That's what oh I, no! That's what, I, that's what I saw. Hey, speaking I of Le, that was pretty funny. Speaking of LeBron James, uh, they, <laughs> where, was, where was speaking of LeBron <laughs> James there? But I like it though. Wait, wait, hold I on, like the transition right? there. Let's yeah, shoo yeah. this in. All right. So speaking of LeBron James, Space Jam Two came out apparently tanking yeah right yeah. so what they're doing they're changing i don't know if you guys did it this. did it tank tanking so uh -huh. it's not making any money so did you hear what they're gonna do mm -mm. they're gonna digitally replace them with michael jordan yeah, so yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. stupid <laughs> that's a bad joke boom is that really is it really not doing well no i've read it hasn't been doing well Really? Yeah, that's what I read. Are you sure, Douglas? Because it's check. on HBO Max too, so it's this whole is the, now. Do you think many movies are doing well right now? Because I actually over the weekend I went and saw Snake Eyes, and I oh. actually really enjoyed it. What do you mean? Was it cheesy good or was it good good? No, it was actually good. I thought it was gonna be cheesy good because I brought my kids and everything. And I'm like, you know, GI Joe. It's I got this like nostalgia to go with it, and like those obviously they recognize like you know in some franchises they know which characters are like the coolest ones. Yeah, dude, Snake Eyes way cool. Like he, he was he always the coolest, and then Storm Shadow, you know, w was there too. So they did sort of an origin story with them and I'm not going to give it away but but they did a really good job of like you know thinking it was going to go a certain way and then the whole thing got Dude, sort I of, loved him he was the ninja yeah yeah he was the baddest he was the best well, figure to, to have is that honestly it's like every time there's there's a way of like you know sort of either like there's a montage of like tr fighting or like you know a way that they they sort of train to become something I, I tend to love those movies the best oh. so did that just get released and it was it simultaneously released on HBO Max because I was just on my no, HBO I don't Snake Eyes, I think you it's have to see just in the, the theater. theater. Oh, I was going to say, I was just on my... I thought they going forward, they were always going to do that, though, now, no? Is on that, some some um, oh, movies not and, not and franchises, yeah, but like... 
there's some still out there that are just trying to push it into the theaters and and see what they can mm -hmm. do with it. Look, Sal, you were right. It did so. This the the original Space Jam outperformed this one. Yeah, wow. and I read somewhere else that they're they're they're. Sales, I guess, went seventy dropped seventy seven percent, like the second or third that's, day. That's what that article says, right, Doug? Yeah, seventy seven tanking. Down. Wow, tanking. Well, so the reason why I brought up the Olympics here's another thing for you, I search hate that Doug. Guy anyway, check out a uh, Tokyo Olympics basketball robot. There's your search. What? <laughs> yeah, this. I think this is cool right here. This is. Uh, I mean, obviously, you'll see the video in just a second when Doug pulls it up. Are they gonna let bas uh, robots play basketball? No, though? it's we're not that mm. far. What if yet. they identify as human? But well, that when what you see right here, really look, look at this wrench. right here. Look at this. Uh, the the clip I saw, uh, it was shooting a hundred percent. So it's a robot. It what? better. <laughs> well, it's still it's got the I don't formula. Know, dude. I mean, Imagine the math, though. That's biomechanically, got, that's pretty impressive. That's way impressive. Machines are, are hella good at math, bro. It, I have it, a calculator that can figure it out. It shoots. Dude. It shoots a free throw and then backs up and shoots a three. Look at there it is, right but there. There's so many other variables. With how he holds the ball, like yeah, look at. I assume it's a he. That's uh, <laughs> oh assuming. yeah. How do you know? Yeah. Dude, yeah. And then it backs up to a three. It's got a robot. Dick. It's a he robot. Is yeah. what it is. I mean, oh, the yeah. reason why I don't know it moves kind of. The reason why slow, I, I bring it up is wow. this is where this is at right now. Like, how far away are we from like integrating stuff like this where you're watching like robots play? So, well, a little catapult. Okay, it, I would definitely watch it if the robots could destroy each other. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Well, imagine if yeah. if they could shoot each it, other. It wouldn't be basketball. Really. You can't really so have what? people in the stands. Have you guys that, ever right? watched the, what are they called? It's crazy. They, is it called Robot Wars or whatever? They have the robots, they design them a particular way, and then they have them battle. Yeah. Have you guys battle ever seen bots. that? Battle Bots. Uh, me and my kids watch all That time. is so fun. Have yeah. you seen it, Adam? Yeah, yeah. Battle Bots. See, that's awesome. Yeah, no, that, that's cool. It would be a different sport, though, Sal. It wouldn't be basketball <laughs> anymore. I just think, I actually think that robots playing basketball controlled by humans is a very... A very realistic future oh, for us. Control, yeah. So like you have a so controller. video gaming oh. is unbelievably popular. Almost every kid growing up is playing video games today. It's becoming video games are so unbelievably sophisticated as far as what what you can see graphically and the, how crazy the games are and how intricate they are. And now we have robots now that can do so like this. How far are we away from you know NBA 2K being yeah. like literally real people it's like drone robots that you can playing? Yeah. yeah, the or the, or it's like that Hugh Jackman movie where he had the the robot boxer and it mimics his like he has all the sensors on his yeah. body and he does all the moves like so you have like a team doing now, that. Now that makes sense because now there's an element of human skill involved, right? Right. Yeah. Obviously, just having a bunch of robots do their thing with no humans involved in it, but humans can. Controlling it make it a very interesting art. and then maybe you do see variations of what you're saying where like okay it's basketball but you can kill one per one robot a game yeah. you know or some weird shit or like there's I, I like what you said that's mm. pretty but boy pro basketball players gonna look very different huh yeah I don't <laughs> here's a 15 year old Timmy from you know you know what yeah. I don't know I don't know if it eliminate it doesn't I don't think it eliminates sports right it does I, don't, I think it just changes the landscape and I think it opens it up for other opportunities I agree because yeah. if you like think about this if you love playing video games NBA 2k one of my favorite games to play right as far as on on a video con console if I also had the ability to maybe play it with real robots, like how cool yeah. that would be. There's got to be a lot of people that would want to do like that. Humans turn, in mech suits. It could just turn into a whole nother, <laughs> another branch. Right? That is really cool. Yeah, yeah. that stuff fascinates me. Remember, that, remember a while ago I told you about, I think it was Google. This this I love this story because it's so frightening. Remember I told you how they got those AI machines to communicate with each other? And then the AI machines invented their own language and they had to shut them off real quick because mm -hmm. they were like, what are they talking about? Yeah. Shut it off. Yeah. That is terrible. You know what I always found freaky. weird about that is how do you how can you tell someone invented a language? They were they you obviously just watched interactions. Yeah, they obviously how it builds on each other. The hell does that mean? I mean, how do you, how can we as humans, if it's an invented language, it's not real anymore, how do we know it's even <laughs> communicating and it's not just... God, you naysay everything. Yeah. I'm just saying. You're like, the, you know like, who you are? How can we explain it so you accept Somebody's it? Somebody's asking that, right, Andrew? Like, you can't be alone yeah. here. Yeah. There's a punch bowl, just Adam's so a turd. Yeah. Yeah. I got a cool story. Yeah. You so, some well, somebody, somebody is listening going like, that doesn't make sense to me either. They have ways. <laughs> they, <laughs> they know yeah, science. Yeah, like it affects the other person. The, the other interaction gets affected yeah. a certain way. Yeah, speaking of yeah. interactions, my... My, my son cracks me, my baby son, right, cracks me up. So babies are, especially when they nurse, they're obsessed with mom and mom's boobs, right? That's it's just a thing. It's normal. It's natural. He's totally going to be a boob guy. Dude, it's so bad. Yeah. It's so bad. 
he, she'll wake him up. And so we've been told, we've been told, you know how we did that, that sleep course and it's worked really well, by the way, he's, he sleeps so much better, even with the move. It's, you can see that there's lots of progress. We had to, we had to regress Good, a man. bunch, yeah. but we're still seeing lots of progress. One of the things they recommend is don't nurse him to sleep and don't nurse him right after he wakes up. Otherwise you train him and condition him to do it. So you have to wait a little bit mm -hmm. and then you can nurse him afterwards. Yeah. But he, so she'll pick him up, wake him up, right? And he's all cuddly. And he does this thing where he's like, he knows he's not going to nurse, but he tries to be slick about it, right? So he like, he's like, she'll hold him and he'll like bury his head in her chest and then he'll sneak his hand up and slowly pull her shirt, <laughs> pull her shirt down. And then Man, I'll be like, I got the move. I'll be like, uh, uh you're not supposed to be. And he'll look at me and smile. Ha ha ha. Bury his head in there. He does this thing. <sighs> he just reaches around her back, like snaps oh, it open. Yeah. Like, dude, hey. like wow, yeah. this kid is advanced. Yeah. It took me a long time to learn that. Yeah. And then here's my favorite part. When she finally like gives him, you know, milk, right. When she finally pulls it out, he's so excited. He doesn't know what to do with himself. So, ah, ah. <laughs> 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 I video, I videotaped. And we him haven't out. changed to this day. Yeah, yeah, I can't show anybody, of yeah. course, because it has my wife's boob in it. But she, <laughs> oh my god, dude, it's uh, the funniest it's thing. I've ever we had seen in my to life. Uh, abandon potty training this this weekend, right? So Why? I think, yeah, oh, did I just, you do the naked? Uh, no, weekend, so I, I mean, one of the last episodes I told you guys that I, I believe it was going to be on Thursday of last week. So the first thing that came up is I told Katrina, I said, well, why don't you wait till the weekend where I can help you? Because she's going to do it Thursday, Friday, Saturday, mm -hmm. and I'd only have help her one day. I said, why don't you start it on the weekend, Saturday, Sunday, and then bring it into Monday. And I know she was trying not to do it because she was didn't, Mondays are really busy for her and I and, every, and everybody, you know, right? So she was like, I wanted to get it done before Monday. And I said, well, I think the first day or two is going to be the hardest of the three days. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I said, better to have me to help you than to try and do it all yourself. So she agrees to do that. Well, what I didn't know leading into this, or I was just starting to piece this together, was we're right in the middle of a leap, regression, whatever you want to call yeah, it. Yeah, you've been saying that. He's been having Yeah, yeah. Sleep. So we're, I mean, I, I talk about how great uh, Max sleeps or anything like that. Well, that's it's not so great right now. In addition to that, we also have now transformed his crib into a bed. So we've got already two things we're battling. And then her and I on uh, Friday night, like we were talking about the next morning, we're looking at each other and like, do we want to do this right now? Like we were both exhausted. We're both talking about he's, we're, we're going through this regression. They put, put too much on him. Yeah. Like once. three all. And that's, and so we actually abandoned the whole idea because of that. So, right. So the funny, so I'll, I'll send Andrew a clip of this. Cause I actually got a clip of it last night. So last night was, uh, my turn to try and keep him in the bed, right? So what he trying to keep him down because he's now can climb out of the bed because he doesn't have a crib anymore, right? Mm -hmm. And so Katrina bought these things that are uh, like door locks that you put on the outside of the door. So you, they're like these little plastic things that stick to the door. And then because we have those little easy door handles that you can just open. So it basically locks, locks them in. Now, I was originally like really nervous. Like, I was like, man, he's going to freak out. Yeah, it might be terrifying. Right. I thought mm. it might be terrifying. So, anyways, we uh, we attempt to do this and we're watching the, the Nanit cam and see him go over there. And I think he knows that he's not supposed to be up because we've already done the go put him back in bed, mm. go put him back in. We've already done, I've already done this like 15 times already. And now I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to go. Because what I was doing was as soon as he started to get out, I'd go catch him. As soon as you go, no, 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 no. Bedtime, right, right, right. right. So just, and that's all I'd say, bedtime, and then put him back. And I kept doing this. And so finally, I'm like, you know what? Let's just see what happens when he finds out the doors are locked. And so he like walked around for like 45 minutes in the room, going back and forth in the dark, mind you, right? Of trying to find the the two doors. He has two doors in his room. He's got a Jack and Jill bathroom and it's attached to his room. And then he has the other door. Both of them are locked. And you see him working his way through the dark and check one door and oh then work his God, way back, back and forth. And then he goes and gets a book. Like he's going to read a book and stuff like that. And he's, <laughs> it's pitch black. <laughs> eventually what he does is he goes to one of the doors and I got a picture. I'll show you this, guys. He's literally like on the ground, like face down like this. <laughs> he, fall, he falls asleep face down in front of in front of the, the so door give up. like yeah. 45 minutes later and so then Katrina and I we let him sleep like that for a little while and then she goes in and goes and picks him up puts him back to bed but I think we might have figured out we could just let him be dude he's not gonna he didn't freak out over the door being locked he didn't in. cry or anything nothing pitch black and he didn't cry or nothing like so he he's self, essentially self soothed yeah mm -hmm. so wow. yeah so I told Katrina I, I wish we would have thought to do that earlier so just to lock him in his room yeah <laughs> <laughs> 
sound does, terrible. I, it does sound terrible. That's why I, I kind of felt bad. I was like, I don't know if I want to share this because I said, yeah. I don't know if anybody else does. You this know, I not. found this thing at Home Depot called duct tape. Yeah. yeah. You do. <laughs> so you know what you can you know what you can do also. Uh, maybe try this because this is what we got recommended. Is we use the camera, the the microphone through the camera. Yeah. So like so for for my son he can't get out of the bed right he's too young but he'll get up look around and you can hear him start to fuss a little bit yeah and then I'll talk through the microphone and let him know like it's all so I don't have to get up and go yeah so and it's like one step away from having to check so the thing we're adding that we will add and we're again we're you know something that I've learned right uh, you just don't want to add too much right so all these so it's like okay this is the first thing it's like you. Every kid's different. Everybody, every every parent will talk about this. And so it's like you do something, you stick to that strategy, you tease it out, you decide, does this work, does yeah. it not work? So this is like the newest strategy and move. The next thing we're adding is the lights, right? So the red, yellow, and green lights as far as what he's supposed to be doing. Like mm. if it, it's red light, you stay in bed, you can't get up, it's yep. green, whatever. That's right? what we use, yeah. Yeah, so we will do that. Um, I, I do like that method. My buddies used that, said he had a lot of success with it. So we will add that. But again, we don't want to add too much. If you talk to him on the camera, he's super aware of where the camera is and he can climb and he can crawl up. Like he could tear it off the wall. If I, if I, <laughs> oh so, my God. Yeah, so I don't yeah. like to draw too much attention to the camera it's like it it allows us we can see the entire room in there but i mean it, there's a wire that runs down and it's behind where his bed is and if i'm talking to him i'm concerned that he'll and oh, he's locked in there that's a good point he'll go over there and just and rip, and rip it, it down because he's done it before he's gonna he's got a hold of it and he'll when we go to Chucky because there's it's not mounted we have to like put it on the window seal that's like his first like f you yeah. like when we put him in there he walks over <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can't see. That's me. All. Well, speaking of babies, so my brother had his. I don't know if I talk, said this on the podcast. They had their baby. So my son was. Um, excuse me, my brother was waiting to have his kid. Right. So yeah. I saw his post. That's great. Uh, little baby Angelo, adorable, adorable little mm -hmm. baby. I'm so excited for. He's gonna make such a good dad. He's a great uncle. So when he's with my, he's with with my kids. He plays with them. He's so patient. He's a just. I'm, I'm so excited for them. But anyhow. He's the one I said that I gave that extra Uller to, the chili Uller, mm -hmm. the one that warms and cools the bed, Smart. right? Smart. And he keeps his bed cold as shit on his side. Well, yeah. he's going to have to, he's had to change it now because it's way too cold for the baby, even if it's just on his side, right? Because his wife stays on the other oh, side yeah. feeding. So he's like, dude, I got to keep the bed hella warm now. <laughs> I'm like that's not that's the least of the shit you're gonna have to change because you have a kid. What's you the, have to yeah. change everything, dude? What's the smallest uh, size that the chili pad is? Because I was telling Katrina, because um, she she fights for the room being warm. Like she likes it. Like she believes yeah. that 70, 71 is like the perfect temperature for him. Which is most people, by the way. Yeah, most I people mean, think that. Yeah, I disagree. Right. No, so I, I yeah. think I think everyone's he, wrong. Yeah. Well, no, I just think he's got. <laughs> I think he's got my blood running through him, and I think he gets hot. Cause he never wants sheets on him. He always kicks it off. She puts him in full. He's in full like you know jumper type of pajamas that he You're goes probably to right bed in. So what I want to do to keep him from like running around so much, I'm like, if you keep the room at like 64, but then we heat his bed up and we make his bed really warm. He's got a <laughs> gravity blank. He's got all that stuff in his bed. Is it'll probably promote him. Climbing back in or stay in there, bro. Sometimes you're genius. I mm. see that is so you that? smart. You hear that, hun? That I, is so. <laughs> she was smart. arguing with me. I was like, "Look, can we just try it? I'm trying it on my night, right? When we, when it, that's the deal. Yeah, you're right? not gonna want to get out if the room is cold right. and the bed is warm. That's right. That is so smart. Yeah, and we're not torturing him. He's got to warm the mattress, put a warm blanket on there, and then make the room like ice cold, and so he climbs in there all oh the time. Oh my god, that's so, yeah. I think that's so, so too. Good. So. He's getting so big, dude. Your boy. Yeah, he's growing quick. He's tall. Man. Yeah, he is. You're gonna he's, have a little giant kid. He's thick too. He's not. He's not like me. I was lanky, and you know. Now, were you lanky at his age or later? Even at his. Well, it's hard. Obviously, at that age, it's hard to call someone lanky because of how short they all are, right? So there's not a lot of tall babies. Two year olds are short. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not a lot, well, a lot of tall, tall two year olds, but. Uh, you could just tell by his bone structure, like his ankles and his wrists. Like, I was less filled out than he was. And we were probably around the same height. So we'll see what happens in the next couple of years. But he seems to be pretty solid. Speaking of filled out, so we did that episode on uh, like how to get jacked on a budget, right? Yeah. So many comments. Like everybody's super pumped. But I got DMs from people who are like, I totally forgot about tuna fish. Like how inexpensive it is, How what a good source of protein is. Anyhow, mm -hmm. speaking of tuna fish, which is always well priced, if you want to get a really good price, do you know who sells? Cans of tuna fish for ridiculous, and it's good. It's good quality. Who? Mm. Public Goods. 
Really? No. Public Goods also sell some food products. Tuna fish? They sell canned products and they'll sell like nuts. So you could buy like I knew they did the nuts, which yes. are, by the way are amazing. Yes. But I didn't know they do tuna. Yes, you could buy tuna fish and maybe Doug can find the oh, price. There you go. It's ridiculous. Now so, that's interesting to me. Like what is the why? Cuz it's canned. I think they sell things that have a long shelf life that are not super hot, super processed yes. like canned foods. So you could buy like sauces and I think you could buy oils if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then I saw they had tuna fish and I was like, this is, because I love, it's a very easy, quick, good source of protein. So yeah. I get, see there it is. I used to, I used to know this, this bodybuilder guy that would, he would literally just eat out of the can and then he had a Diet Coke and that was like his whole like oh, regimen. You just eat oh, I, I tuna get, fish and Diet I, Coke. I, how I, many, I'd what's, be lying if I oh, that. what's the price and how many cans? Yeah, six cans for 16. Six cans for 16. And you get a very high quality can of, pro of, of, of protein. I think it's like almost 40 grams of protein. Six for cans for $16? Mm -hmm. I don't know what that, what, how good that, I can't remember the last time I bought. Well, it's, 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 it's definitely a good price in comparison to, especially the quality that you're Is it get. Doug? Do you know? Yeah. I don't know. Oh yeah, I don't yeah. know either. You don't need I didn't even know they did. How, how did Not you really. find that? Were you just on their website buying something else? I was going it? through and I was making a big list. Uh, I, yeah, I like ordering the staples, right? So like uh, soap. Soap for the kitchen, or right. shampoo, or conditioner. Tooth, toothpaste for me has been yeah, a big detergent, one. toothpaste. What that is kind it? Of stuff. What is it? What does a paragraph say? It says it's all good, and it says it's BPA free. What? 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 What's their? Let's see. The selling points. Yeah, yeah, caught without the use of fish aggregating devices, which is uh, pull and line caught when possible. Yes. Yeah. So, like tuna fish, they can use these. They use these massive. Uh, nets, right? Massive. I don't know what's called dredging. I don't know what they call it, but they throw out these huge nets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're not, they don't discriminate between tuna, uh, yeah. dolphin. Yeah, that's why they all get caught in there. Yes. And you can definitely catch more tuna that way, but you end up killing a lot of, you know, st stuff in the crosshairs or whatever. You catch a lot of other fish in the crosshairs. This is fish, this is uh, pole and line caught uh, tuna. So try and find pole and line caught tuna. This quality what for that price, you know, good luck. That's probably what makes it a really good price. Yes. I bet you can find tuna cheaper than that, but I bet it's because of how it's caught at that price point. Yes. yes. That's interesting they would even go that route. I wonder what what uh, inspired public goods. They have lots of like they have a, a, lots of other stuff. Now you're not gonna get like fresh foods typically, like you know, fruits and vegetables and stuff like yeah, that. It's not yeah, like a grocery I mean, store, but they will have, you know, huh. products like this, <laughs> which is pretty good. Yeah, it's anyway, dude, I uh I wanted to bring this up because we get so many questions on soreness. Like, oh, I, I don't get sore or I get sore. Does this mean, mean I'm having a good workout? So we just finished putting together the garage gym because you guys know I moved, right? So I finally got it all set up. Yeah. And I did my first garage workout in a long time. And I, we got back from vacation. Like, Was it last? With a week before last. And when I'm on vacation, I kind of do this full body 30 minute workout every single day. And typically there's really no way to work out your calves because you're not going to find calf machines in resort gyms typically. So I didn't work out my calves for a week except for, you know, hiking and stuff like that. Then when I came here, I did a few exercises, but not much. I have a calf block in my garage gym and I like to do standing calf raises with a barbell or with a dumbbell. And I hadn't done them in a while, right? So Saturday I wake up early. I'm going to do my first workout in my garage. And I'm like, you know what I haven't worked in a while is my calves. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do body weight calf raises because I don't want to get too sore. So I did like 50 reps, three sets. Bro, I am sore to the touch. <laughs> it's the hardest thing to predict sometimes is how sore you'll get from a workout. But it's just, I guess, you know, it's anything that's differs from your norm. Yeah. Just body weight calf raises. I find it's only, it. you only have to be a couple weeks off for me to feel like I almost have to regress all the way back to like what the beginning of almost every program. It's so wild. Yeah. I, I, it's amazing to me how little I have to do. If it's been two weeks, I missed a body part. Let's say like your point, mm -hmm. um, I can get away with the most minimal workout for that to get it, to get sore. Dude, yeah. the most humbling, uh, moment. I remember the, uh, speaking to the whole sore thing was when the, we first came out and there was we boxing on there and we were going ham with it right we were having tournaments and everything and the next day 
dude, I was so sore. My shoulders and, and between my, and my rhomboids and everything else. I'm like, why am I so incredibly sore? It could not have been from that stupid video game. Yes, it was. Do you guys so. remember the original NES, Nintendo Entertainment System, right? The, original, the first one, right? Where you, you blow on the, and you put it in a little. Yep, yep. That's right. I don't know why we, we had to breathe a particular <laughs> way. <laughs> was it you who it brought like it up? I, I find time. it fascinating that everybody knows that. Everybody. Before the internet. And this, yeah, no internet. It yeah. was just all word of mouth. Do you guys remember when they made when they had their attempt at like engaging physically engaging video games? So first they had Duck Hunt, which you had a gun, which would actually kind of talking work. about the arm. I like Duck Hunt. The, then uh, they had the hand. Oh, Nintendo the glove. Power had yeah, the, the glove. different That's options. The glove, which yeah. was shit. I got it because I thought it would I be had cool. It, too. it was, it was garbage. I never had that. Do you guys remember the running game with the mat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, 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 okay. Do, do. Well, now, they, they brought that back for the Wii. Yeah. Now, did you guys do the same thing that we did? So eventually, you figure out that if you just get on the floor and hit, use your hands. Do, do, yep. Do, you can make it. Did you guys all do that? Yeah, yeah. See, yeah everybody yeah. did that. And it's the, the same thing with running. You just like move your wrist. Yeah. I yeah. got DMs about the, remember when we brought up that Dance really Dance bad, Revolution? Yeah. So that's called uh, bar raping. Oh, you did, and it's, you and did it's, say that on the podcast. Bar oh, raping? I did, yeah, but I didn't say Why bar raping. so extreme? I think you did. No, no. You I didn't say bar raping? No, I don't think so. I would have oh remembered God. saying that. And it's looked down upon by other Dance Dance Revolution people. These are yeah, definitely the guys, purists. These are definitely video game guys that come up with these names. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, every time, it was a yeah. girl who was the person who did it, who's, or, or who messaged me, and she was like, she was like hardcore into it. In fact, oh, I think wow. she was like part of a team or some shit like that. So <laughs> it went like, it was a big deal. I think it's still pretty popular um but i didn't know that that was like frowned upon so it's 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 mm. almost like when cheating it, it's like uh what was it in street fighter when people would cheap when they'd hit the same button over oh, and over like again button mm -hmm. pushers yeah or they'd fireball 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 uh, you know and then uppercut and just keep That's doing so that over annoying. again yeah it's like finding a hack pushers. in the game and then yeah. just yeah. doing it like yeah, crazy. there's skill to this okay yeah <laughs> so so for people who don't know we typically will have notes up on a screen to kind of remind us to bring up topics and stuff and i'm very curious justin yeah i see up there that you wrote this, that it says, me barbecuing without a shirt on. Why the yeah, hell would you put I was, notes? I was going to insert that after your little calf session there, uh, because Courtney got this text message, right, from Jessica, and they're talking back and forth, and uh, you guys just uh, moved into your place, yeah. and so they're talking, because she grew up in the area and everything, but uh, yeah, Jessica's just like, just enjoying the views, and she's doing like a scan, you know, around the backyard. <laughs> Guess who's barbecuing shirtless? <laughs> oh, no, I was like, give me that. Ooh. No, what? Look at this Adonis. No, that's so yeah, dumb. Yeah, it's great. Oh, that's so, it was uh, hot, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so your wife appreciates it, though, which is good. <laughs> oh, you know, I, I hope that's working in your Honey, benefit. What are you doing sending you know, pictures Barbecuing like that. shirtless that's, around uh, the people. No, you know what? I hate, I hate, I hate farmer tans. I Can't hate, stand I them. hate shirts. <laughs> I I hate therefore, like shirts. I hate shirts. Shirts are the dumbest thing that were uh, ever made. Therefore, I hate wearing shirts. Well, well, I shot it up on the TV, and me and Courtney were getting some popcorn. <laughs> and, no, you weren't, dude. Yeah, we were, we were drooling. That's a nice a bonding bit. movement. Yeah. Uh, a moment between yeah, the two of you, for sure. No, it was hot. It's hot this weekend, and you, if you're outside, I don't know about you guys, but if I'm outside doing work or something or barbecuing. Then I come in and I start to get this stupid farmer tan that doesn't yeah. look good in the beater. So I gotta, yeah, yeah. I gotta tan it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Well, all the kids too, and I'm like uh, out at the football practice or like just the first to throw their shirts. Oh, off dude, you gotta give me an update on that. Yeah, Where we, the deal we with get that? the latest update on that? So we did have our first seven on seven scrimmage, which we kind of set up with our local rivals, which they've turned into our rivals over the last few years because there wasn't a school there in Scotts Valley, but now there is. Uh, and one of the coaches that used to actually be a coach for uh, our team uh, when I was there actually moved there and he was a head coach for a while. And so there was a little bit of like over the years was bad blood. Like there was just some uh, animosity and just like certain shenanigans, like one team would do, the other team would do. And it just caused all this like crazy friction and to a point where I think uh, like our coach, I think uh, basically was like, this is too toxic. We're not going to have any more scheduled games with, uh, with them. And so we're trying to like, you know, mend that whole thing and, and create like a more of a friendly rivalry again. So anyways, this was a first step because it's a whole new uh, group of coaches coming in to take over our program. Right. And so this was like a little, I was a little nervous about this because it's like, you know, apparently there's been bad blood, like who knows, like these kids, I don't know what, like how uh, much experience they have on seven on seven, but they're just, you know, they might demoralize us because we're just like a brand new, we have a lot of greenhorn. There's like not a lot of turnout. So what happened? We did great. 
like these kids played with with instinct. Like we we tried to put the most simple game plan together for them to just be able to kind of run free and uh, see, you know, who was athletic, who, who, you know, kind of started to predict where uh, to be and kind of catch patterns and all that. And so I was really proud of these kids, like especially the JV kids, because we literally haven't even run like one defensive formation with them yet and i was just like you know day of they're like we need a look from the jv i'm like we've never done it before (laughs) so i'm just like putting all these kids you know to three four really quick and you know trying you you have to have this responsibility you got to go out to the flat and so they just um you responded and so you uh, said did well does that mean you won well it would I mean, if you want to put the numbers out there, I would say yes. But um, I mean, if nobody was guess, keeping we track. Put the numbers out there, absolutely. We I mean, we to. were keeping track. So <laughs> yes. yeah, we definitely had like uh, six touchdowns. They had like about four, and and we had uh, six interceptions. Wow, which dude! Was my hell yeah, dude! Hell wow, yeah, wow! Yeah, wow. Yeah, so, I, I was pumped on that. You know, when you told me you were doing this, I was so excited for the kids because I know obviously how good of a, a leader and a trainer you are. But this is phenomenal hearing this success. They must be so, these kids must be so pumped right now. Yeah, well, you know what it is? It's a culture change. And it's just like, uh, it's just what, it's things you didn't think about because I went in the program and we just experienced it. But to now like understand like why uh, we thought the way we did was is what we're trying to inject in these kids because it's they just don't have that. They, they haven't had that in a long time too. This unifying front, this, you know, you're, you're responsible for bringing your best every time and to, to also like include everybody else and lift them up in the mm. process, not what just is, yourself. What is the, uh, when you run like seven on like that, is it, what do you run? Like as far as an offense, what's it look like? It's like you have four down linemen, a wide, two no, wide receivers. No linemen. No linemen. No linemen. Okay. Yeah. So what does it look like? What do you, what, yeah, how do so you, you just run different sets? You run trips, you run quads, you run. So you is know. that what it is? It's literally, you run with all the like running back, wide receivers, yeah. quarterback, but no linemen. No linemen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're just, and so but they can still there's blitz. coverage sacks and things. So we had a few of those, mm-hmm. which was great, which means like we just took did a really long. good job. Yeah. yeah. If they would have thrown it, they they would have got picked. So, you know, there was just stuff like that it was really encouraging. I think the kids just felt like, yeah, okay, we we are onto something here. You know, yeah. coach isn't crazy. That's you know, not to get sentimental, but the other day we were walking to lunch, and uh, Adam had said something that was really profound to me. He said that for him, that because you know, obviously a lot of people in his situation, his his father committed suicide. Then he had a stepdad, not the best relationship when he was a kid. He said some of his best male role models were his coaches. Yeah. And it made me, I thought a lot about what you said. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the statistic is generally speaking, almost half of boys grow up without like a really present father. So sports are so, I didn't even think of that. Like it never dawned on me. I I wasn't in that situation as a kid. So I can only imagine boys in particular, because you really need a male role model to be in a sport Especially a team sport, we have to depend on other people. Yeah. Especially football, which is violent, and if they don't cover, you could get hurt, right? And then you have your coach, and this is why when I hear, because I didn't play team sports, right? I did judo, jujitsu, stuff like that, but it wasn't it's not like a team sport. And I hear people like you guys talk about the profound effect mm-hmm. that your coaches had on you and what the sport had. And when you said that, it it made so much sense. So. Oh yeah, yeah. really, no, I, really cool. I, I mean, I don't know where where I'd be today if I didn't have sports as a kid. Now, obviously, when you're in it as a kid, you don't think of that. You're thinking of I just want to play, and you know, you want to win, and like I'm competitive. But you're not thinking of the looking back now as an adult when I unpack like my youth and the things that I learned as far as working with others and persevering through hard times and getting back up and. You know, the, the, all the practice, like consistency, like the, all these things, these lessons that have made me successful in other aspects of my life, like business, uh, those things are uh, for sure. They came from all the sports that I played as a young kid. And I, who knows what it'd be like? I mean, th- there's statistics on kids that go through sports as far as their their likelihood of finishing school, drugs, all this stuff like that. I, I forget what, but they're crazy. I mean, yeah. it's... It, it leans it, it so was heavily essential on for me. I mean, to be busy, you know, to have like an outlet and to also the, the, the physicality of it too, uh, just to have a healthy outlet to, to express, you know, some of the, the physical, like violent kind of tendencies I was going mm-hmm. through, going through 
all these crazy hormones and just, you know, what my body was going through. It's like I needed that uh, to to be in that environment. Uh, otherwise, you know, I could have found myself in a toxic environment where that would have been a problem. Do you have like a, do you have something stand out? Like I can think of things that like, like stand out to me that I learned from sports. Are there things that come to mind for you that like sports 100% played a role in that and that? So many things, dude. Yeah. yeah it really is um, you, it, like figuring out like how you can like find your role and, and find how to benefit everyone else in a team environment and dynamic. And uh, also, uh, to become a leader, um, to uh, take that upon, like a lot of times, like you just get called upon randomly and, and you have to step up or, uh, you know, and that's really hard a lot of times because, you know, for somebody like me too, like where I'm a little bit more reserved or, you know, I may, may have been a little bit more introverted initially, uh, it, it challenged me a lot to to step forward and to take that role on and bring people along with me. So I, I don't know. There's just so many examples of that, and to really just face challenges constantly, and how to how to navigate through that. Uh, you could take all those lessons and apply them to everything I do in life. Totally. Yeah. Dude, what was yours? You know, there's a there's a quote. Um, I don't know who said this quote first. I'm sure Justin. I'm sure you both are familiar with it. It's uh, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Mm -hmm. And I was never like a. I was not naturally gifted. <laughs> Swimming was about the only thing I was naturally gifted at, and I didn't play that. Uh, right. Yeah. So I didn't do that. So. Uh, I was never the best guy or even probably the top five guys that was playing the sport, um, but I definitely had a uh, work mm -hmm. ethic. And because I wasn't one of the better athletes, I wanted to be one. And I just, I knew that I had to get up at five o'clock in the morning and run. I knew that I had to go on the weekends and sacrifice. What a maybe. valuable lesson. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And, the, the, and, the, and seeing how I started to excel in those sports and did beat out some of these more talented players, I recognized that at an early age. So, you know, it's the same way. And we all have a very similar attitude. I remember when we, one of the things that um, I loved about going into business with you guys, you know, almost seven years ago was we all knew that we would suck at this skill. <laughs> we all just yeah. knew that we had no media background whatsoever. None of us were, were talking on a radio show or, or knew even what podcasting really was back then. But we all had a very similar attitude. Is just like that's okay. Like I can go, I can get into this and know that I suck because I know what it takes to get good at anything. And we all had confidence in the ability to work hard at it. And that yeah. comes from the from that same thing in sports for me was picking up something that I was passionate, excited, ready to do right away. Finding out you're not gifted at this. There's lots of people better than you. But then knowing like, hey, when they're sleeping, when they're being lazy, yeah. when they're doing this, I can put the work in right. to catch up. You can put the work in. Also, you can find the people around you that have certain strengths and you can feed those strengths. Right. right? And that's, that's what helps you win. Yep. And yep. What, that the winning mentality and the winning dynamic is something that you really learn in sports because it's very clear and objective. Yeah. And, and it's uh, also a lesson in acceptance because simultaneously knowing that you can outwork people or that you have that that skill that you can work hard or develop that skill you also have to learn to accept that there are people better That's than right. you yep. except that you're not the tallest or the fastest or the best looking or whatever mm -hmm. that is a very uh, powerful lesson and to give a little insight into you know people watching this show right now the reason why we do five episodes a week of the podcast is because we knew we sucked it, mm -hmm. that's literally the motivation. People yeah. think it was a, a business decision that we would, because we're going to do, no, the main motivation was, you know, if we do one episode a week, boy, it's going to take us years before we do a thousand episodes. What if we did five a week that, you know, and that's, a, I mean, I learned that lesson through resistance training. I knew if, if I sucked at an extra, I'll just practice it all the time until I get good at it. Yep. That was the main motivation. And what the funny thing is, that also turned it, not only was it one of the best business decisions because it got us better faster, but it also became a great business decision because we put out more content. Oh, we still talk else. about yep. that. I mean, I brought that up just a couple of days ago. I said to you guys, because I was doing the math on the hours that we've technically put into this. And it, we are just now approaching uh, halfway to what would be considered mastery. Which 10,000, so, right? Yeah, we're not even at that. We're not even at the 10,000. We're not even halfway to the 10,000 mark. And so for me, that's extremely exciting to think that we've had the traction, we've got to where we're at currently uh, with the show and the business, and to know that 
I still got along with. Just it reminds me of being a personal trainer, sports, everything else that I've done. It's like mm -hmm. I know damn well I wasn't a great trainer those first few years, but I also didn't have ten thousand hours of training clients. Now when I reached that point, I was a whole different coach and trainer. And same thing goes for any sport that I ever done. When you first picked the ball up and started doing it, those first few hundred or even few thousand hours, you know, you're still nowhere near what they rough. would consider mastery. And I and we're not even mm -hmm. close to that with podcasting. So there's so much more to go. Hey, real quick, I hope you're enjoying the podcast. Head over to one of our new uh, partners, right? So buyoptimizers.com. Head over there and check out some of the products. Now, my favorite product of theirs is their mass enzyme. So do you eat a lot of protein and do you find that sometimes it's tough to digest? Believe it or not, you might not be assimilating all that protein that you're eating, especially if you eat a high-protein diet. So digestive enzymes help break them down into amino acids so they can be used to repair muscle, build muscle, and of course that helps you burn body fat. But they have many, many other products. My favorites are the Mass Enzymes, their HCL, and their probiotic supplement. They've done wonders for my gut health. Again, go check them out, buyoptimizers.com. Just don't forget to use the code MINDPUMP10, so that's MINDPUMP10 without a space, for a discount. All right, enjoy the rest of the show. Our first caller is Abby from Florida. Abby, how's it going? How can we help you? Hi. Um, so just to give you some background, I'm a 5'5 female, currently around 98 pounds, and the last time I checked, I was about 8% body fat. Whoa. Currently, I have a workout program from a trainer three times a week, and my split for these four weeks at the moment is one upper, one lower, and one full body day. And right now, I usually get about 20,000 to 30,000 steps each day. And on the other four days, I don't work out with my trainer. I'll run or walk on average anywhere from 10 to 13 miles and sometimes throw in another full body day on my own on the weekend. Steady state cardio helps me with my anxiety, but I tend to push myself too hard and some days end up running a half marathon just because I want to see if I can. I'm eating around 1900 calories a day with 120 grams of protein and the rest usually breaks down to about 50 fat and around 250 carb and I take one or two on track meals a week. I'm a recent college graduate and I'm applying to medical school for fall of 2022. So for the gap year, I'm starting a part-time job next week as an anytime fitness membership experience manager. And on top of that, I also volunteer at the hospital. I know all this exercise isn't sustainable, especially when, when I'm going to be start working over 30 hours a week starting next week, but I don't really know where to go from here. I recently just finished playing Division II college soccer, and I'm not sure how to train for lifestyle instead of performance, and I'm scared of suddenly gaining a lot of fat from drastically reducing my cardio all at once. I was advised by the trainers at school that my body fat's at an unhealthy level, and my cycle's often irregular. I just want to look and feel good and be strong and not ruin my metabolism, but I don't really know how to achieve that. So my question to you is how do I transition away from so much cardio and implement a more sustainable workout plan slash how should I adjust my macros to reflect less activity? Yeah, no, first off, great woo! personality. Yeah. And I also like long walks at the beach. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, <do. laughs> I just hey, want to add that too. They, first off, thank you so much uh, for calling in, asking us a question like this. So can I ask you some, some personal questions if you don't mind? Yeah, sure. Okay. Do you, um, have you ever dealt with any eating issues, orthorexia or anything or anything else? Or would you say that you might have a tendency towards that? No, definitely. I like grew up eating really healthy because my mom's a personal trainer too. So I think when I came to college, I was like so scared of gaining that freshman 15 that like, I was like, I'm only going to eat super healthy. And like, I know like probably the first two years of college, like I was like really restrictive and I think I've gotten a little bit better about that, but yeah, definitely tendency towards orthorexia. Okay. Yeah. So, and you're also a medical uh, school student and in my experience, people who uh, tend to be high achievers um, tend to self-medicate when they're stressed out with more work and more accomplishment. So some people turn to drugs, other people turn to alcohol overachievers tend to turn to, uh, you know, challenges, physical challenges or more studying or more volunteering. Would you consider yourself somebody that would fit in the type A personality type category? Yeah, a hundred percent. So I'm going to give you some advice, what I think you should do, and then I'll answer your question. So this is totally, okay. you could take my advice. It's totally up to you. Again, I, I do want to thank you for calling in because, um, you know, putting yourself out there, is a real tough thing to do. So 
your body fat is too low. Um, it's too low for a female. You're, you're, if you haven't already caused yourself hormonal issues, you, well, she you, already is. She's already had ir- irregular months already with her period. Yeah. So you're, 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 then you're causing yourself some issues now. A lot of these can be long lasting. You can also cause yourself bone mineral issues. Um, uh, you can cause metabolism issues, other health issues. But I, I don't think you should focus on those things or running away from those things because if anything, those are going to drive you in the same direction that you're currently going. So what I'm going to recommend is this. I'm going to recommend that you uh, don't observe body fat, don't observe weight. I would definitely take away any type of intense exercise. Um, strength training is perfectly fine three days a week. Perfectly fine. Getting getting stronger, it's actually great. Focus on getting stronger. And I would recommend that you focus on how you feel and also being with your feelings. Um, sometimes people have anxiety or stress, and rather than sitting with those feelings, they tend to distract themselves with, with lots of activity and lots of different things. You're doing a lot. You're doing more than than three people should be able to do just for yourself, well, and would- you're probably going to crash and burn if you haven't already. So I would scale everything way back, three days a week of resistance training. Don't weigh yourself, because here's what's going to happen. You're going to gain muscle. You're going to gain body fat. You should gain body fat. As a female, your body fat should at least be twice as high as it is now. So you said 8%. You should be at least 16 is really lean. You should be at least 16%. And so your weight's going to go up and it's going to freak you out when you weigh yourself and you see that. So avoid the scale, avoid those things. And then if you really want to take it a step further, I really recommend that you work with uh, a therapist who's worked with situations like this once a week or even twice a month and just give them feedback. Hey, here's what I'm doing. Here's my nutrition. What do you think? And dig a little deeper. And I promise you it'll get harder before it gets better. But when it gets better, you'll find this balance with exercise and nutrition and you'll develop a new relationship with it. Because right now the relationship you have with it, although it's taking you away from certain things, it's a stressful one. And that is definitely not sustainable. I think you've identified that the, the not sustainable part. So that's my advice. Now to answer what you said, I would slowly just scale things. If you don't want to go that far, just just eliminate the running. Just start with that. Just cut the running out and keep everything else and increase your calories by at least 600 calories a day. That's that's where I would start if you just want to start slowly. Are you going to leave anything for Justin and I? No, no. he wanted to start. I'm going crazy. I'm going to eat the whole burrito here. Yeah. Yeah. I, hope, I hope your one-on-one session with Sal went well. Yeah. yeah. So if you were if you were my client, the, the first thing that I would actually say to you is I'd ask you what you're running from. Um, if I have a client that's training this much, working that much, got this much on their plate, that in this crazy of lean shape already and is still pushing, um, I would I'd want to dig in. I'd want to find out what it is that you're distracting yourself from that it causes you to do this much exercise. You're already in obviously beyond physical as far as the as far as eight or body fat percentage wise in incredible shape. That's also the the good side of this. The good side is um, you're in a you're in a, an, an easier place to help somebody physically, uh, the, mentally getting through all those hurdles and getting to the bottom of what Sal was alluding to. Uh, that's probably going to be the biggest cha- challenge of all this. I mean, simply allowing yourself to have a few hundred more calories and cutting out all the running and, uh, and extra activity uh, should be uh, easy. It's less work, less effort you need to put forth. But my concern as a coach, or if you were my client, would be mentally being able to get through that. Something has got us here, right? Yeah, I think that's really it's it. Most of the challenge here is is the mental side to this is to be able to shift that over into you know performing as well as you're performing and everything else with uh, recovery and uh, you know focusing more on what's going to actually restore your body to keep you going. So to to be able to kind of look at how you can increase that within your schedule by eliminating you know some of these things that uh, you know you're overdoing quite a bit uh, will actually help to improve all other uh, avenues of, of what you have yourself uh, involved in. As something more specific as far as training too is if you're not, I don't know what the split looks like that you're running, but I would definitely run a you know maps phase one maps anabolic type of a program. I mean and and, and or something like uh, maps powerlift, something where you're focused on 
getting strong, you're focused on the weights that you're moving, you're not thinking about the scale, you're not getting hung up on uh, your body image, you're, you're not paying attention to that stuff. It's really just about getting in there, training three days a week, trying to get stronger inside the gym. Uh, that's what I would do as far as my lifting protocol. Yeah, you know what, Abby? I'll, I'll give you something else too because one of the hardest things to do when – you're using something as a distraction or you're medicating with something, in your case it may be exercise, is to just take it away because now it's gone. So now what do I do, right? Sometimes it's easier to replace it with something that is uh, better for you before you eliminate everything completely. Mm -hmm. May I recommend uh, yin yoga or meditation? So on those days that you normally take an hour to run or to do lots of activity. Now, you're not going to do power yoga. You're not going to do hot yoga. No payo. You're going to do the, <laughs> the slow yin yoga. It's she very it. slow. You're holding positions. You're focusing on your breath. Uh, or meditation. Sign up for a meditation class. Don't do it on your own. It's going to be really hard to do on your own. Meditation is not easy. Uh, but sign up and take a course or do a class. Those would be the two things I would say that can replace what you're currently doing. That might be an easier step than just cutting, you know, things out. Just, just out of curiosity too, how are you getting twenty to thirty thousand steps on a non-running day? How, what's that? Where's that coming from? I walk a lot because I live in Florida and it's nice out every day. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do you have maps you're just anabolic? Super productive. Yeah. Do you have maps anabolic? By the way. No, I don't. All right, we're going to send that to you. And then I'm, you know what I'm also going to do? I'm going to send you the Intuitive Nutrition Guide because okay. in the Intuitive Nutrition Guide, there's a lot of talk about developing a better relationship with food. And I think that might benefit you. Now, I want you to be, you know, I want, I want to be very clear. This is not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy because you're, the direction that you want to move, although logically and cognitively, I think you know that's the direction you need to go. But making that change is going to be very challenging. You're going to have to take a bit of a leap of faith in order to do it. And you're going to have to be okay with gaining weight. Although you know logically 8% is too lean and your body weight is too low, that still doesn't mean that you're going to be okay with gaining weight. So that's why I said get rid of the scale and avoid even paying attention to it for a little while because- Focus uh, on strength. Yeah, because it's going to be really hard to see the scale go up even five pounds. You're going to want to reverse that. Okay. Thank you all, all right. so much. <laughs> no, no problem, Abby. Thanks for calling in. Thank you, Abby. Thank you. Ooh, that's a tough one. Mm. That is really hard, especially at that age, at a college. Her mom was a trainer. Yeah. She's surrounded by it, and it's uh, that's how how many times have we seen that kind of relationship? Oh, with exercise I've, I've seen that mm -hmm. a lot, and that's why my first thing back, if she was my client, would just be to be very direct. And what is it? What else is going on that we are trying to avoid thinking about that, that you need to do 30,000 steps on what you would consider an off day. And then on days when you're running, you're doing 10 to 13 miles. And then on the other and a days, marathon when you feel like it or half marathon. Yeah. And then on top of that, getting ready for, ready for med school and working. I mean, that's just obviously trying to stay distracted. I have no idea what from, but that's that's where the real thing, it's so funny, we're talking about, she wants to know about macros and, and food and what my exercise program, but the truth is it has nothing to do with that. Yeah. There's something else going on that the that's what you have to get to the bottom of. You get to the bottom of that and those other things fall into place. If you get hung mm -hmm. up on, and even our advice, macros, focus on strength, you know, cut back, like still that's the wrong focus. I mean, maybe it's better direction than the current direction she's going, but the real answer lies in figuring out what is it that you're trying to avoid thinking about. Yeah. Well, she's killing it on on a lot of different levels, but it's just too much. Like it, like the sustainability and uh, longevity uh, for all these different activities and pursuits. It's just you know it's going to hit to a heading point, uh, which it already is. Oh so. yeah, it damages your your organs. You start to see osteopenia in young women, especially in 98 pounds at five five eight percent body fat. You'll start to see that. Obviously, hormones. Uh, are going to be through all. But here's the here's the the light of that. The good side of that is she obviously has the ability to focus and be uh, you know ambitious. Right. And so if she can figure this out, yeah, discipline won't be the problem. Oh yeah. yeah. If yeah. she could figure this out, she's got a lot of success ahead of her. If she doesn't, it's gonna be very very. I find it interesting. She's got a, a, a train. She's a trainer for a mom. Her mom's yeah. a trainer. I wonder how long. We should have asked how long that was. Kind of. I wonder. And uh, this is totally speculating. Could be totally wrong right here. Right. But. You know, I could see uh, 
a, a kid, uh, like I could see my kid being this way if maybe my son was born when I was like in my early 20s and I was infatuated with, you know, building a body and it was all about body fat percentage. Totally. And I was constantly looking at image of myself and like I always per- had this, you know, <laughs> imagine being a young kid who you see, you look up to mom and dad so much and this is what you see is what they focus on is like mm. the-, the I, I used to train a psychologist mm-hmm. who said that because we talked about this, about children developing uh, eating issues and you know body image issues. And she said, now there's the obvious causes where the parent says something to the kid, don't eat that, you'll get fat. Or, right. But she said, what's more common is not that. It's not that the parent says something to the kid, it's how the parent talks about themselves. Yeah. Mm. Like, oh, I can't eat that, honey, I'm going to get fat. Or, oh, right. I don't look good in this bikini. And then the daughter or the son hears yeah, mom or dad, yeah. Yeah, say that about themselves, right. and then they internalize it. Our next caller is Cody from Indiana. Cody, what's happening? Hey, not much, guys. Thanks for having me on. Um, so uh, my question is, uh, I'm recovering uh, from ACL surgery. I had it six months ago today. And I'm in week seven of a 5 by 5 program I've been running. Uh, but I want to know if it's safe to start a cut while I'm trying to rehab my knee. Oh, I see. That's a good question. So you want to know if, if cutting your calories while your knee is healing is going to call, uh, slow down recovery of the knee? I'd be, yes. more, I'd be more worried about the five okay. by five. Yeah. I um, Maybe. I don't think so, but maybe. I, typically, if I have a client that's recovering from a surgery, I keep them at least at maintenance. I don't put them necessarily at a surplus, but I do keep them at a maintenance because theoretically the cut in calories could – slow down recovery. Now, if you eat too many calories, that could also slow down recovery because of the increased inflammation. Uh, is there is there a problem with waiting till the knee gets healed? Or what, why start the cut now? Um, the reason I'm wanting to start the cut now is, uh, for one, I'm, I'm typically performance-wise, I do my best around between 190 and 200 pounds. I'm currently sitting at 215. Uh, and with my job, I have to be able to kind of go to a dead sprint at a moment's notice. So the extra weight, um, kind of has me worrying about that a little bit. Uh, Hmm. it's kind of, uh, I feel like I, if I keep gaining weight, the recovery will be harder to get back to be able to sprint when I need to, um, as opposed to if I lost a little bit, uh, I feel like I'd be a little bit more comfortable with that. Are you doing any cardio right now? I am doing a little bit, uh, mostly through my therapy. They want me to kind of keep it on my therapy days. I go twice a week. Um, I do a treadmill uh, for about 10 minutes, Stairmaster for five, and then I do a bike for five. Um, But on my non-therapy days is when I'm doing my lifting. Are you tracking your steps and everything else with some kind of like... Uh, yes, I average about 10,000 steps a day. Yeah. Okay. There's Look, you can't sprint from a dead stop right now anyway because your ACL is he- healing. Now, I would definitely not want you to gain weight, but I don't know if an aggressive cut would be a good idea until the ACL is healed. So I would either try to maintain or watch your weight slowly go down, but I wouldn't aim... Probably not a good idea to try to lose 15 pounds while you're also healing from surgery. I mean, is yeah. they, are they telling you they, they don't want you to? So like if I asked you to do incline walking, so I put you on a uh, 10 incline and power walk, 3.5 speed, you know, three times a week for a half hour to 45 minutes. Are you, is your, your PT telling you they don't want you doing that? They uh, don't want me doing that quite yet, uh, just because the rehab, I mean, I'm only six months out. Uh, typically before, uh, when I was 10 years ago, I was about, you know, right at this point, I was about 100%. Right now, I'm saying probably closer to 85, maybe 90. Um, but no, there's no reason why I couldn't do that. And I absolutely would do that. Um, I just don't want to. My, my main concern is I just don't want to keep carrying this extra weight if, yeah, the, I mean. The reason why I was okay. asking is because I, and, and, and the reason why you're getting a lot of questions from all of us, because there's not so much a wrong or a right answer here. And this mm-hmm. is one of those ones that I think all of us as coaches would want to kind of play day by day on how you're feeling and the feedback that I'm getting from you. Mm-hmm. But I, why I would rather you do, 
I would rather you create a caloric deficit through walking on the treadmill mm-hmm. or doing a nice incline walk somewhere, just getting the steps up. Justin asked about that earlier too. Probably the same reason is mm-hmm. I'd rather you stay fed and give the body the, 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 the nutrients it needs. And if I create any sort of a caloric deficit, I'd rather do it through movement in your case, especially if the movement is going to promote recovery uh, with your uh, ACL and also potentially performance. Yeah, and overall in the activity, overall general activity, I would like to, you know, focus on increasing versus like, you know, bringing that intensity into like your five by five training, for instance. Uh, I would yeah. much prefer you to, you know, like get more restorative type of movement in uh, blood flow would be more of my focus. Yeah. And I, I want to address that too, because that was my first uh, comment about the my my one concern would be running a five by five right now. If you are at a place still with the ACL where PT doesn't want you even doing any extra cardiovascular activity, then I'd be concerned with heavy lifting, which basically is five by five. I would be doing more you know stability and high rep training. Yeah. So even you get more like hypertrophy. Yeah, so hypertrophy and stability and just high rep uh, type of movements. Because at one, there's uh, less risk. Two, in this case, it would be beneficial for the caloric deficit also. Um, that's kind of where I would push you right now. Yeah, now here's I'm going to give you something specific, okay? I want you to do traditional resistance training for the knee, that's okay. For the leg, that's okay. Studies show, now in the past, if you broke an arm or you hurt a shoulder, we would say, don't work out the other arm because it'll get too far ahead of the other one. But now we know that with studies that if you train the leg that is okay, you actually reduce the muscle loss on the side that's injured. So go ahead and strength train with your good side. And then I want you to do BFR on the leg that Mm -hmm. is uh, injured. So I don't know if you're familiar with blood flow restricted training. Yep, absolutely. But I do that on the the side that is healing because you can use, you know, 10, 15% of the weight that you normally would, which you're probably working with now Mm -hmm. and actually induce a similar, not the same, but similar effect to traditional resistance training. So you might actually be able to build a little bit of strength and muscle on the side uh, that is healing. And then the last thing I'd say is when you're done with your PT, when you get cleared, use a program like MAPS Prime Pro to work Mm -hmm. on hip, ankle, and foot mobility so you prevent this from happening again in the future. If you don't have the BFR guide and MAPS Prime Pro, we'll send that right over to you. Yeah, I don't have Maps Prime Pro, um, and I actually I don't have the BFR guide either. Okay, um, that was going to be my next question, and thank you guys for already answering that. Of where should I go from the five by five? Yeah, no, the, um, we'll, we'll send those over to you. Do those, yeah. the, especially the blood, the occlusion training. It's remarkable what it can do. Uh, at, at, at the very least, at preventing mm. muscle loss. That's where it came out of. Uh, it, yeah, of therapy. That's training. the most valuable yeah. place that mm-hmm. you could use it. All right. All right. Thank, thank you very much. No problem. Thanks, Cody. All right, thank you. You know, I've only used the collusion training for like aesthetic purposes to add a little extra size to areas that don't respond. But I, I, and I've never trained a client. I don't think I have with occlusion training who's had an injury. Mm-hmm. But I swear to God, if I had one now, I think it would be oh, so, it's so fun. effective. Yes, yeah. it would be so fun to implement that to just to see what it does. You know. Yeah, especially when you're limited uh, with range of motion, it's it's a great way to still add that kind of hypertrophy training and build strength. I, f- I found it interesting. The PT doesn't want him doing any of the, any other cardio activity, but then would be okay with like a five by five type of training. That's sounds weird. Did to they me. approve that, or did he just? Do I don't know. I probably. I think it's probably just upper body. Mm. He's oh, probably not training lower body. Oh, do you think that. that's what it is? Six yeah. months later, even? Yeah, I mean, it sounds like it. He says he's eighty-five percent or whatever. I mean, it sounds like it. I can't imagine a PT clearing five by five compound lifts when they're still rehabbing him. Right. You know. Yeah, I, I don't. And six months is actually. I mean, he should be doing pretty good by now. Um, but I, 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 to me, I instead of cutting calories, I definitely would create a deficit through more movement mm-hmm. and more. Yeah, I mo- like that. Yeah. yeah, and I would do things like BFR stability type training. I mean, probably the stuff that he's doing in rehab, mm-hmm. I would be doing that more. Mm-hmm. You know, throughout the the day and stuff like that to get better at it. Um, and then when the time comes for him to get back into more traditional strength training, um. I would either run one of the uh, ma- main programs we have in reverse order or do like a performance, maybe maps yeah. performance type of training. Well, even then too, like more unilateral work because like stability is going to be the biggest yeah, yeah. issue. So uh, yeah, five by five, you know, it's to me, it just doesn't make any sense for this. No, no, not for this person. Our next caller is Harrison from Delaware. Hey, what's up, Harrison? How can we help you? 
Hey guys, so my question is focused around athletic performance. I'm a rugby player and a lot of the programs that I followed in the past are either focused around performance or aesthetics and there's never really a combination of both. And obviously I want to look good. So I was just wondering if there was a way to train for both at the same time or what do you guys recommended? Yeah, that's all, it's a very sexy athlete bundle. Yeah, right? yeah totally. Yeah. A very common question. So I'm going to ask I, if I you see, have a face like Sal, there's nothing you can do. About nothing. That. You can't, no, no exercise <laughs> yeah, or diet will yeah, make you handsome yeah. like Adam. Can't fix ugly. So, hold, so I'm going to, I see in your notes here that you're 19, you're 6'2 and 235. Is that, is that correct? Yes. All right. So you're, you're a big boy. A uh, like, if you don't mind me asking, do you know what your body fat percentage is? Or maybe, because I can see you on camera. Can I see your abs? I want to give it a good, maybe, good idea yeah, of what your body fat is. Maybe send Sal a nude picture. No, no oh, nude pictures. Oh Just let, let me see your abs. Okay, so you're at athletic body fat. So your your body fat percentage is shredded, but you're not like super overweight. You're a moose, by the way. It's that genetics, you know? You're you have like a trail to happiness. Yeah, you're a big I boy. See. All right, so here's a... <laughs> Whoa. I'm just saying. Whoa, Justin. Uh, yeah. All right, so here's the deal, okay? You're, you're 635, six, uh, excuse me, 235, 62. You're a big dude, okay? Your, your body fat percentage isn't that high. It means you got a lot of muscle. If you just got a little leaner, I think you'd be... You get the bo the best of both worlds. In fact, a little leaner. You don't have to get shredded, honestly. I think if you drop like 4%, you'd see your abs. And you'd be very happy with your aesthetics. This is more of a diet thing than yeah. it is a yeah. exercise thing. I would say, because rugby is such a physical, strength-focused sport, that if you just train for performance in rugby, you'll have the muscle, you'll have the shape. All you got to do is get a little leaner. I mean, literally, I think 4% body fat loss, you'll be totally fine. And honestly, all you need to do to, to, to get there is drop your calories by about 500 calories probably a day and monitor your performance. Make sure it's not such a big cut that your performance declines. And then watch yourself slowly get leaner. And as you get leaner, the aesthetics are going to show well, up. Well, if you're anything like me and you've stuck with performance style training forever, and then all of a sudden you get yourself into like a hypertrophy phase where you know your focus is is more on like higher reps uh and you know you're isolating movements uh it, it's, it's going to add a whole new stimulus to your body that you're going to respond to so you know that's something too to consider is like really just implementing that plan for you know a few months even to just like shake it up and give your body a whole new stimulus it's going to do all kinds of new things uh that you know you're going to benefit from i mean we wrote the sexy athlete bundle for this exact question though i mean that's 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 the programming, what it looks like. And then to kind of Sal's point, I would pick days when I, I don't need to go and perform on the field or if you've got practice. I would pick days where you are home or off and make them low-calorie days, and that'll lean you out. So low-cal days on days that you don't need the fuel or after, like let's say you, you fuel your body – for practice or fuel your body for game or wherever we're at in the in the season you fill your fuel your body for that and then post afterwards you know lower calorie restrict so put yourself in a little bit of a deficit and you'll lean out because again you probably do have the physique right there you're carrying just a and by the way too if you were to probably to ask i'm sure you'll get comments on the youtube channels and sal got you to lift your shirt up i'm sure you're gonna get plenty of comments that will tell you you look you look great already yeah he's probably sitting at like 16 maybe percent body fat oh, he 4%, looked leaner. He looked 15 even, he looked leaner, not if you, at the most right you, you know you drop about four percent i mean he's a big dude i, I mean I, look i'm gonna make a guess here you're 62 235 19 years old you're probably eating a lot am mm -hmm. i am i right or am i wrong yeah he's yes. not, yeah yeah you, you probably eat like a horse so if you cut it a little bit and kept training the way you did mm -hmm. you know getting leaner makes a tremendous difference on aesthetics. There's people that don't even work out, barely have any muscle. They just get lean. Yeah. And all of a sudden they, they look, look aesthetic. Ripped. Where, where are we in the season right now? Are we in season or we, I don't, I don't follow rugby. What's the, where are uh, we at? For the collegiate season, we're approaching preseason in late August. Okay. okay. So now are so you, right now, what's your, yeah. What's your training look like for it? Uh, so I'm basically building up. It's a lot of, hang cleans, back squats, pull-ups, a lot of movements to generate power, and it's slowly getting heavier, like pushing 85% of my max for each lift at around five, four, three reps. 
Mm. Now, yeah. are you doing now? Obviously, not every training session is that, is it? I mean, you're not you're not trying to max out or hit PRs every workout, are you? No. Okay, so I mean, on on non PR chasing or non scrimmage days, I'm going to hit you low cal. I'm going to drop your calories a little bit lower. If you if you don't know where you're at currently, track for a couple of weeks to get an average, and then set a goal for four of the days in the week you're under calories by 500 or so and then the only times i'm going to feed you over is when i know we're going to go after like a, a switch PR to, to light beer yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's my advice yeah. yeah you know it's you know we always whenever we answer questions we always think of okay does will this person benefit from something that we offer and can we give it to them for free honestly the thing i think you'll benefit the most from being an athlete at your age with the training you're doing is maps prime pro honestly to prevent injury and improve mobility and then for nutrition i mean we have our intuitive nutrition guide i think that'll help you a little bit you could also go to maps macro.com to get an idea of how many calories and macros but you have to fine tune it to your individual body so i'll send you the the maps prime pro and the intuitive nutrition guide and honestly i'm telling you right now if you cut your calories a little bit and you know justin you know he made a joke about light beer but i've trained people like you and honestly, a young male like you, active, lots of muscle, oftentimes it's a small. Oh yeah, it's like the, it's, it's like don't eat donuts oh, on Saturday. Exactly, boom. it's totally like cut out the pizza yeah, on yeah. Saturdays or stop the sour patches every day, or it's normally something like that I can find in my young athletes. What's like, what's the worst shitty food you eat on a regular basis? Be honest. Uh, tacos. I'm a big taco guy. Oh, Damn, I'd hate yeah, to tell you not yeah, to eat yeah, tacos. I don't want to get rid of those. Another Here. one. Give me another one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it would be racist to get rid of tacos. Let's not do that. Yeah. Deep dish yeah. pizza. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you what, cut, cut your taco intake by a third. You'll probably drop 4% yeah. just from that. Yeah. Seriously, instead of ordering you know, five tacos, order three. Are you not drinking? Are you not drinking on the weekends or anything like that? I know you're underage. We shouldn't be. Yeah, what are you doing? Yeah, so, yeah. 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 Man. Allegedly. Uh, there there are rugby team activities <laughs> okay. like once a week. Okay. Yeah, yeah, See, so, yeah. I know. I played rugby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Shoot the boot. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I would just, it, it's, real, it's really going to be a cow thing. We would recommend the, Training protocol, but you've got uh, you probably have programming. And he's preseason. Yeah, you know? yeah. You have you probably have programming that's already set for you that you should be following. So we're not going to deter you from what we would recommend as far as training. I've been with Sal. You know, cut back on some of the calories. Prime Pro to kind of prevent injury and stick we'll, to that. We'll send you Prime Pro and the Intuitive Nutrition Guide, and then just cut the calories down just a little bit, and then see what yeah, happens. Yeah. And then send Sal a nude update. In six <laughs> Don't weeks. do that. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. He knows he At wants least in that. A bikini. Not at all. He wants okay. that. <laughs> thank you guys no problem man thanks for calling in yeah you know it's funny when well you're just getting you're getting people to lift their shirt up now one, per, one person like, wow. all you gotta do is call for it yeah i, I know, I know. Yeah. wow yeah so you know it's you know what's so you Power. know what's interesting about this i remember because i was always trying to bulk right my 99 percent of the time i was training trying to bulk and i'll never forget you have a similar story adam the one time i yeah. finally said okay i'm gonna actually try to get lean yeah and People were like, whoa, you got so much bigger. Oh, mm -hmm. my God, I can't believe you built so much muscle. I'm like, I didn't. All I did was get leaner. Getting lean does so much for aesthetics. Especially uh, somebody yeah. like you or myself or a guy like this who's an athlete who's probably training his entire body. So he's he's built. He's got the muscle. Yeah, he's built muscle on his entire body. Whether he thinks he has or not, he yeah. has. If he peels down a couple layers of body fat. He'll just define it even more. Yeah, you'll you'll see it for sure. My only thing challenge with someone like that would be I don't want it to get in the way of our progress of what's real. Because here's the thing. I like your advice of the off days. That was very, very good advice. Right. I, I, that's what I would do. I mean, he could even potentially if it's a full day off of everything he could mm -hmm. fast yeah. you know mm -hmm. to really reduce reduce the calories down right there now again we've talked about fasting not a great strategy for losing weight i think with his he probably just overeats or just eats a lot you know young athletes so yeah. probably okay for him yeah yeah i totally agree and i and i and what i don't want to do is uh, obviously he's a, a collegiate level yeah. athlete so you don't want to get in the way of him yeah, performing on the field, yeah i don't right? I mean all to see what a couple abs for a little yeah. while i mean that's silly so i wouldn't want to i wouldn't want to ruin that so I, that would I, my most concern would be that is like hey we can get lean right now but i don't want to chase that so it's, much it's so like, funny though i've trained a, a few people like this it, especially young men and it's literally normally you have to like watch someone's food and okay no, you good. made a good point literally it's like oh i just stopped eating donuts on saturday and i got lean it's like holy cow but dude. even a sport like that that's so much running and explosive movement like it always helps for you to kind of cut down a little bit so you're more athletic and, sure. and faster like yeah. i think that's a a big 
issue with a lot of athletes out there. They want to get big and be able to, you know, really dominate. But, you know, you, you need to be able to be uh, as quick and fast as possible. Well, I mean, if Sal is right in his guess on 15% or so body fat, I mean, if he brings himself down to 10% body fat. Yeah, he'll be yeah. flying. Yeah, at his size. That's a good athletic body fat. You got yeah. abs and everything. Yeah. All right. Our next caller is Cindy from South Carolina. Hey, Cindy. How can we help you? Hi, guys. Uh, thanks for having me on. Yeah, no problem. So I found your podcast about four months ago, uh, which was right after I signed up for a very expensive online coach. Mm. Um, I'm 47 years old, and uh, I had been sedentary about a year before I hired the coach. I've sort of had an on-again, off-again relationship with exercise, uh, often getting injured and derailed um, each time I start a new program. Um, and uh, the coach put me on a reverse diet. And what um, I found kind of surprising about the programming for the workouts, it seems contrary to a lot of the advice I hear you guys give. So I thought I would run it by you. Um, the programming is very high in volume, um, often eight exercises or so for larger body parts, four sets of each, and a ton of supersetting of the same body part. So I found the first few months I was progressing and then I've sort of just gotten to this point of fatigue <laughs> where I just feel like um, my muscles are getting overused. So I'm dropping in the weight on most exercises I'm afraid I'm going to end up injured, and I'm not sure if it's the best use of my time in the gym when I'm reverse dieting. So I just wanted to throw that out to Thank you Thank God for intuition. Huh? Yeah. yeah. 32 sets of muscle group? Yes. Holy shit. Yeah. You, I, uh, so fire your coach. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm being yeah. se totally serious. They are totally overdoing it, and are it, it, they're, they're one of those online coaches whose approach is- they're, on, they're overdoing it for a highly trained athlete. Yeah, so much I would, less somebody who's been on and off exercise and is trying to get back into it, and then is also trying to reverse diet. It's kind of uh, counterproductive to be well, training that much volume while also trying to speed your metabolism. Well, it's up. not mm. if you don't know what you're doing, because then what the ver th what they're doing. This is probably the mentality: is I'm bumping your calories. We need to burn those off. You know, type of deal. Yeah. So, uh, is something. there a reason why you didn't hire a one-on-one -on -one trainer? Do you prefer the the virtual aspect of the online coach? Honestly, I was just looking at social media and I saw the beautiful bodies of all these bodybuilders. And so I was like, I'm going to go for the best of the best mm. and hire this bodybuilding team oh. as a lifestyle client. Yeah. But yeah, I kind of have been shocked by the workout programming. It's just not at all what yeah. I expected. Okay, here, here's what I'm going to do. I don't know if this person has any that more space. formula never works. Yeah, I don't know if this person that. has any more space available, but if you want to work with someone online, uh, Marlon Chamel, good friend of ours. He's actually in our... YouTube videos. I hope, hopefully, he's got some space available. I believe his Instagram is Shamel Fitness. I think, uh, but we'll send you his. Yeah, his he's his, awesome. His, I always. He's I, really, really good. Work with him. He knows what he's doing. If you want to go online, if you want to hire someone in person, hire a trainer who has a lot of experience training everyday regular people. Uh, bodybuilding coaches and trainers are terrible trainers and coaches for for everyday regular people. They're good if you want to compete in a bodybuilding show. Uh, typically, even then, sometimes they're they're pretty bad. But I, you're doing way too much. Cindy, are you locked in? Did you pay, prepay this person? Yeah, so I'm stuck with six months. So I have another two months to go. Um, yeah, and not only is it really high volume, the recommended rests are so short, like 30 to 45 yeah. seconds. Like it's exhausting. And I'm in the gym two, two and a half hours Ooh. each workout, five times a week. So it's a lot. This is what we're going to do. So we'll just, we're just going to chalk this up as a, as, as a loss financially, but we'll try and make up for it on our end. So we're going to send you over maps and a bulk. That's the type of protocol that you should be following. Start in pre phase, by the way. I want you to do pre phase for about six. Uh, six weeks. That's right. Doug is going to give you access to our free private forum, which, by the way, uh, the trainer that Sal is recommending is also in there. So you can actually communicate with him and us while you're in there so we can probably help you through some of this. Um, but for the, the audience that's listening right now, too, I... <laughs> If you're if the trainer you hire virtually or online doesn't listen to Mind Pump, that should be your first red flag. That's what I just that's why I tell people going forward now. Like there's your first way of screening is do they subscribe to the channel, listen to the content that we're especially if you are a, a the everyday person, like the competitive body. It sounds like you literally got a cookie cutter plan that they were also putting the steroided 250 pound bodybuilder on. Yeah. You are running the same program that he is running right now, which could not be further from the worst thing that you should be doing right now for where you're currently at. So pre-phase maps anabolic is the type of training protocol you should be doing. 
the reverse dieting aspect is correct. I don't know if they're doing it correctly or not, but that is what we would want to be doing right now. But the volume of training is making that counterproductive, and so we need to scale back on that tremendously. Yeah, li literally, if you hired me, I would have started you with two days a week of resistance training, full body, yeah. and we would have done three sets per body part in those two workouts. Yeah, not 32. No, no. So <laughs> Huge difference here. Yeah, they went they went totally crazy. So I, I, I would ask for my money back. You're probably not going to get it back. Maybe you can threaten them and say, hey, I, I was on Mind Pump, and you yeah. sure you don't want them to shout out your name for being yeah, a shitty coach yeah. <laughs> or something like that? But We'll do it. But yeah, you've already spent the money, so you could chalk it up. Hire a good coach. Uh, but if you don't, if you just want to save a little money, start with MAPS Anabolic Prephase. That's great advice from Adam. How'd, you, sure. how'd you find the show, Cindy? I was just searching for fitness um, podcasts. I felt like something was wrong with my program. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I just started listening to you guys and I fell in love with you. And I, you know, now I listen every day. I've got my husband hooked and everybody I can talk to, I tell about the show. Awesome. Well, yeah, hopefully right. we can help you navigate through this. I think the, the forum provides tremendous value. We're going to get you in there for free. MAPS Anabolic is the type of training protocol you should be on and then you in the forum you feel free to ask questions and there's lots of other professionals besides just us in there and so hopefully we can coach you through this and then make you not feel so bad about the wasted money on this other coach awesome thanks so much thanks Thank Cindy. You, Cindy. Yeah. Oh, man. holy shit you know it's you know it's <laughs> hey, she's got she's on the joe donnelly workout Dude. i was gonna say <laughs> that you beat me to it no, no, that's ridiculous. <laughs> you know what's funny is that when when there's someone that does a good job you typically, because sometimes trainers get a bad reputation and it's because it's not because most trainers are that bad. There's a lot of bad trainers. It's because when they're bad, boy, do they cause a lot of damage. Yeah. Like 32 sets per body, about 47 years old. Short rest yeah. periods. It, she's had many yeah. injuries. Sure, there's she said. some people that can do that, but yeah, it's not even close to being a demographic. <laughs> no, <laughs> not no. even close. Bro, that's a lot for the steroided 250 pound bodybuilder. Uh, that's yeah, great. Dude. <laughs> it's Insane. crazy. Insane. Look, if you like our information, You'll love mindpumpfree.com. A lot of free stuff, a lot of free information. We put it together. We compiled information on different aspects of training to provide more value to our audience. Mindpumpfree.com. You can also find the three of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.